Okay, good evening and welcome to Thursday night at Living Word Family Church. This is These Final Days Ministries. I'm Pastor Ryan Speakman, serving under my most favoritist pastor in the whole world. That's an actual word. Pastor Maureen Collins. Let's hear it for our pastor. And uh, it's going to be a special night tonight. Actually, a couple of cool things going on. So first of all, we have a brand new camera that, that some amazing anonymous donor donated to the church which means it's used in the sanctuary, but we can use it in here. And boy, I look good. I, I didn't know I had like that good like color tone. Wow, that's great. So um, yeah, moving up in the world here. Uh, and also, um, the big news tonight, of course, is that we have a special guest speaker joining us all the way from Port Elizabeth, South Africa. But before we get to uh, Pastor Jay, and let me, let me make sure he's, uh, he's on. Uh, bear with me, everybody. Uh, there he is. Pastor Jay, say hello. So I can hear you. Okay, I, I hear you real faintly, but we'll fix that. No problem at all. So just uh, hang, hang tight, Pastor, and let me get through my one million announcements, and I will be right with you. So welcome to everybody watching by live stream. I, I know there'll be more joining. So, so uh, I'm going to go as fast as I can through the announcements because we want to get to Pastor Jay. Uh, he's got some amazing insights to share with us, I'm sure. But let's all do this together, okay? Like we always do, Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Ready? Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, we receive that special blessing promised to us for doing the hard work of studying this amazing book, the book of Revelation, and everything that pertains to it, which is like everything, right? Uh, so is this the right month? Yes, we're in March right now. So let me get my pointer, laser pointer. And uh, this is tonight. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky with the schedule here. So uh, our next normal class, regular class, would, would normally be in two weeks. But uh, we are not able to do class that night because of something going on at the church. I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, so in lieu of that, if this is okay with everybody, I don't want to shortchange you right before I leave the country for a couple weeks. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do a class next week. And I think the timing of this is good because you're going to hear Pastor Jay tonight, not me. So you're not going to be totally sick of me. You'll be So everybody say class next week also. Class next week also. Kind of a weird way to phrase it. But, you know, I know I knew what you meant. So... So, um, so, uh, try to, yeah, so try to come back uh, next Thursday also, and then we'll, we'll kind of do our regular schedule as best we can before I leave. Um, now, uh, everybody knows my mother-in-law, Sharon Kaysen. Everybody say hi, Sharon. So um, she's, she kind of like inspired me to start thinking about our class and, and our topic and all that. Uh, you guys know me. I mean, whatever the topic, I go as fast as I can, and it still like takes a long time to. I don't want people to get bored of the rapture topic because it's extremely important. Uh, my mom-in-law, a couple times, I think here and then also in, in another class, has has commented on. You know, she likes the scroll. She can't wait to get into the scroll and the, and the actual timeline. So what I decide to do, we're going to keep we're going to keep talking about the rapture. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to stop that topic until we're we're done with it. All right. Um, and we, we like haven't even gotten into the you know biggest part of the New Testament yet, uh, but I'm going to start alternating between that topic and this topic. So I'm starting a new series next Thursday, and the series is Are these really the last of the last days? So you guys know that I believe that we're the final generation, we're the generation that will see Jesus come back, and uh, this is this is going to be fun. This is going to be very very amazing. Um, but what so what I'll do is next week I'll teach uh, I'll introduce this topic. And then the next class after that, two weeks later, we'll, we'll uh, go back to our rapture topic and then just alternate back and forth. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. And that way we just kind of get some variety and yeah, because the rapture topic, I, I thought it would take, you know, a few classes. It's ended up being a much bigger topic than I expected. Right, Sil? It's, it's big. Uh, of course it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the, but the reason that we're really digging into that is that, that like I've been saying all along, that's really the core. Oh, sure. It's really the core question. I, I mean, it, it's the core point of my entire ministry, like the calling of my life. And, and I've never taught this before. And, um, and what I'm doing with the topic is I'm leaving no stone left unturned, meaning we, we're, we're going to look at every argument in favor of a pre-tribulation rapture, saying that we're going to be out of here before all the bad stuff starts. 
and and we're going to dissect it and look critically at it and and see what the see if we can figure out what the word is really telling us so 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 far it's been a you know i think we're batting a thousand on on that what the let me for those of you who might be new uh joining us online and we got a lot of people watching now online um what what i uh have been teaching ever since 1999 when i first saw it myself in god's word is that uh contrary to how i was raised and what i want to believe the rapture will not take place. Let's see how many people drop off. Will not take place until, like Jesus says, Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the great tribulation and the reign of the Antichrist. So that just opens a gigantic can of worms. So like Sylvia said, there's a whole lot more to the book of Revelation. That's where we're going to get into this other topic and do them side by side, right? Uh, but but it's not just academic and interesting now. Now, if we are here for all this, it's really important that we understand it, if we're that generation. But that's that's the topic that's that's our question that we're going to start to answer is are we really in the last of the last days so sound good and then uh so this is uh the schedule for april so there won't be class two weeks from tonight again it'll be next week and then two weeks after that is the 13th the next thursday after that i will be packing very very you know uh busily <laughs> for our for my fourth research trip to israel my um yeah, right, exactly. My seventh, no, sixth trip in the context of this ministry. But uh, Ben is going with me, uh, Mark is going with me, and also Tom, who's who's traveling right now. He's not in class. But uh, And then the next Thursday, of course, we're in Israel. So so our May schedule is is TBD, to be determined. We'll figure it out. Hi, Carlos. Welcome. So speaking of the Israel research trip, here it is right here. So uh, I really kind of uh, shot for the moon on this, and there's a reason why my number is so high. My goal for this, uh, 7,500 for this research trip. Uh, remember, I, I do this, of course, for me and my research and my books, but I'm doing it for you guys because, I mean, that's why I do ministry is to is to teach what I learned to, you know, everybody else. Again, my four, this will be my fourth research trip to Israel. This is, it's gigantic. I, 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 I am being 100% honest. You guys know I stand up here. I don't tell stories, Kate. Okay? Try not to. Uh, I'm putting more work into this one trip than I have all my other trips combined, no joke. And it's shaping up to be the most fruitful yeah, Ben can verify Mark, right? You guys, you guys know like 1% of what I've been doing. I'm talking like like a couple hours a day putting into this. Uh, so I don't know if you guys remember Zedekiah's cave back in 2017, my last trip there six years ago. Uh, this is the cave that supposedly connects to a secret cave system that King Zedekiah used to escape in the Babylonians. Didn't work out so well. Uh, and, and then there's hints that there's some connection to the Ark of the Covenant, which is underneath the Temple Mount. Um, when I was there in 2017, I just was there as a regular tourist, paid my, you know, five bucks, whatever, you know, 15 shekels, whatever it was to get in, walk through. And there was this one tunnel that said there was a sign up. Sorry, Pastor Jay, hang with us for a sec. Uh, there was this one tunnel that had a sign danger, do not enter. And there's like a chain across it. And it was pointed direct, directly in the direction of the Temple Mount. So I've spent the last six years trying to track down the organization. Finally did. I, and not only that, who here has heard of Ron Wyatt? who claims to have discovered the Ark of the Covenant. Zedekiah's cave is where he claims to have discovered it. I actually have connected to the guy who led Ron Wyatt's team. And so we're going to get the true story. He didn't find the Ark of the Covenant. Sorry, Ron Wyatt. But um, he didn't. <laughs> but but the, And he actually, we're working on getting into the cave. Uh, instead of five bucks to get in, it's, it's going to cost us $300 for that tour, for that tour guide. Uh, I'm explaining the big, the big number here. Um, the, the Western wall tunnel system goes right along the base of the, the, uh, Western wall underground. The normal fee is like five bucks to get in. We're paying a guy $500 who is, who, who is like, like, you know, the foremost expert on the whole thing. No, he worked there for about a year and a half. And he said, this guy is like the expert and he's going to take us. He said, this is Indiana Jones stuff. His, his term, not mine. He's going to uh, take us deep underground. No, cla you better not have claustrophobia. Sorry, Mark going down ladders, crawling through tunnels. He says he's going to get us uh, closer to the Temple Mount, like underground, like under it, than you can get without violating international law. And uh, he's, showing, he's going to show us things that won't even show up in the archaeological journals for another 10 years. So, and he said, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to show you. I know, right? A lot of stuff I'm going to show you that, that you guys, you know, can't, you know, put on Facebook, but he's, but that amazing. Same guy's going to give us a tour of the city of David. There was a tunnel discovered from the city of David to the base of the Temple Mount. Uh, we're, we're working on an interview with the WAC, which is the Jordanian organization that controls the Temple Mount, Muslim WAC based in Jordan, in both Jerusalem and Amman, Jordan. 
in a long story short, that's impossible for me. Um, this is why my fundraiser is so, so I have such a big number because of what I, this is like six years worth of just chomping at the bit to get back over there and do this level of research. So it doesn't get better than this. Uh, today I heard from Yehuda Glick. If you never heard of him, Google him. Uh, he was in the Knesset, like Israel's version of the, the U.S. Congress, right? And I had given up hope of getting in touch with him. I tried six years ago. They wouldn't let me anywhere near him. Um, he contacted me today. Oh, yeah, I'd love to, to meet with your team. So just crazy stuff, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we are up to a little over $2,000. We leave in four weeks from tomorrow. My goal is 7500 And just pray about it. Be led. If you can help with this, I know that there there's a blessing attached. This is for you guys. We're going to come back with some amazing uh, information, videos, stories, photos, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're doing the deepest possible research. I think that is you know possible for for a team from America, right? And uh, so just yeah, pray about. It. Let me pass the offering bucket with that gigantic sales pitch and. And, you know, whatever happens, um, God always provides. So, you know, what, what, however this pans out. I've got $2,000 right now, and my goal is 7500 if possible. Well, you've moved up a lot since the last time. Well, the last time was 6500 for the Africa trip. Oh, I meant last week. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, we've actually raised another $1,000 just in the last, you know, couple weeks. So, But um, just be led. Just ask the Holy Spirit. And if he says, nope. Ryan's going to have to do this 100% by faith, and Ryan will do it 100% by faith. I promise you, whatever happens, we are going to accomplish all of our goals over there, and it's just going to be absolutely amazing. Amen. If you'd like to donate online, go to thesefinaldays.org. You can find my best-selling book series, all kinds of content. Click on the Donate button up here. Here's the Revelation timeline if you want that. Click on Donate. That takes you to this screen. Click the big Donate button. That takes you to PayPal, and then you can select Israel Expedition 2023 from the drop-down list. And finally, our everybody good? Our topic, the rapture. That's what we've been talking about. So you guys have been hearing from me for, for you know, a couple months now on this topic. I just finished the Gospels. We're done. Huh? <laughs> right? I, I just finished the Gospels. So, um, so it's a good place to take a break. We're getting ready to go to the country. So I have invited uh, our very own Pastor Jay Mutali from Port Elizabeth, South Africa, to come and join us tonight uh, live from South Africa. And we'll be meeting with him via Zoom. I think he's already on there waiting for us. And uh, we're going to hear his um, insights and perspectives. He, he's an amazing man of God, highly anointed. I consider him, because the Holy Spirit told me, a uh, full partner in these final days ministries. And this is just uh, one more step. I think I'm going to start inviting him more and more. And uh, nobody here would vote against that because he's way more likable than I am and better looking and taller. Oh my gosh. I was, when I got off the plane, I'm like, you're Pastor Jay? It was, yeah, very upsetting. So, all right. Uh, he Actually, he asked me to put this up. Uh, so, Pastor Jay, are you ready, my friend? I know everybody's ready to hear from you. So, let me... Um, let me switch over to our Zoom call. There it is. Okay, you ready for us, Pastor Jay? Let's all welcome Pastor Jay. Yeah, let me uh, get him on here. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes, I can, Pastor. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, and you sound, you sound pretty good. Everybody, does he sound okay? Okay. Except for that crazy South African accent, but other than that, right? So, uh, Pastor Jay, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the um, the laptop around so you can see the audience. So, yes. Oh, are you serious? We should have tested this. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you say that. That would have been a good idea. So, hey, everybody, bear with us, please. Everyone watching online, just. OBS? Uh huh. Okay, Ben's coming. Pastor Jay, just stand by, man. Sorry about that. OBS. We are a high tech operation here. Where is my cursor? Where is cursor? Oh, it's right here. Oh. I'm like, why is it in the trackpad? <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, I disabled it. Okay, then. So, everybody, just bear with us for a sec. He can see you, Ben. Now, you guys can hear him okay through the TV, so that helps. We have to be able to broadcast this to the live stream. Everybody watch on live stream. Just bear with us. We, uh, Which one is this? Okay. 
We're getting this down. That wasn't it. Sorry, everyone. I'm trying to think of something to say so we don't lose our live stream audience. Huh? Morning time over there. Uh, it is. It's actually 3 o'clock in the morning over there. So everybody say thank you, Pastor Jay, for being up in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. And, and Dee Dee and the kids are fast asleep, I'm sure, right? Advanced audio properties? Now how, now, how can you tell until you get back over there? Okay. All right. Uh, but people watching on live stream, can Pastor Jay say something? Pastor Jay say, I love you, Pastor Ryan. <laughs> I love you, Pastor Ryan. <laughs> yeah, he heard me. He laughed. Oh, good. Okay, so we're working great. So uh, people watching on live stream, can you, can you hear Pastor Jay? Pastor Jay, say something again. Okay. Love you, <laughs> okay, good. You just keep saying that over and over. Okay. So, hey, um, why don't you why don't you kind of introduce yourself <laughs> while I turn the laptop around so you can see can you can see our room and then we'll have some interaction. Okay. So, introduce yourself, please. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, my name is Jay Jedidaya Manasi Mutale. I am. I am in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. That's in Africa the, on the coastline. Um, hey, everybody. <laughs> so lovely to see you. Um, now the pressure is on. <laughs> I'm so used to see Pastor Ryan. <laughs> um, I greet everybody in the wonderful name. Am I not clear? Your microphones. You can hear me though, right, Pastor? Pastor, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can okay, hear good. You. Yeah, let me know yeah. if you can't and I'll stand closer to the machine. So all right. Go ahead, Pastor. Second, second Pastor. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I think there's a time delay. It is the other side of the world. Can you hear me okay? Right, it's not grabbing your... I'm still but not really. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Pastor Jay, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear oh, you. Oh, good, I okay. I'm just going to stand up here then. All right. I can hear you. Okay. Um... Must I go ahead? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. okay first, I just want to uh, thank the Lord for this opportunity to be able to speak to the children of God. Um, I bless God so much. Before I start, let me just send my love to Pastor Maureen, spiritual grandmother. Love you. I know she's not there, but I just want to send my love to her. Um, to everybody, to my, to my online gang, uh, Cindy, uh, Ma Cindy, uh, Mom Sharon K, Ma Sharon Jackson, Mom, everybody who's online, I love you guys. Uh, God bless you. And to everybody in the class, I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So humbled to be here. I do bless God for everybody that is here. Um, you, you, you are such a blessing to me. I really enjoy our classes. My one today is to talk about um, um, the rapture, the topic of the rapture, and um, how it has affected me as a minister. Well, I'm not going to take the route that pastor has been taking because uh, it's, it's it's a bit of a difficult thing for me to go right. Dive straight into the way that he does. So I'm going to take a route that says, um, imagine that, imagine that just one day, I'm going to access to use the imagination, right? I'm going to use our imagination and imagine that everything that Pastor ever taught us about the rapture, about the rapture, about the Antichrist, about the, 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 the the timing of the rapture, where the, where, the, where the Antichrist is coming from. Imagine all of that was 110% correct. Right. And for him to get to that wisdom, he had to uh, 
dedication of time, and he had to do all of that just to come to that rightness that, he's, that was given to us. And um, imagine that everything that he ever taught about it was 100% right. And that's the level yeah. that I, I was required. Everything that, that he did is, is the standard <laughs> of what is required. Am, am I good? <laughs> You're good. Keep going. Keep going. Yes. Okay. And everything that he ever said, right, was a standard of, of the level. Everything that he ever, of all the studies that just put in was a standard required to actually get some, to actually get some right doctrine from you. Um, imagine that everything that was ever, every, every, every single aspect, right, was correct and, 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 uh, and the conditions are still the same. The, the topic is still unwanted. People don't believe in what, what, what you're teaching and what we teach and what the Bible says and, and, and where we stand on scripture and what the scriptures say. And people don't actually ex accept this topic, and, and, and that's 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 the basic narrative right now. The basic narrative right now is that uh, though though we understand righteousness to be hundred percent correct, because Noah had a very uncomfortable topic. This topic was not a widely accepted topic, despite him having a word from God. The word that he had was not a word that was common in the time in, the, in that time. And, and uh, it was not a word that people wanted to hear. It was not a word for the season, right? It was not a word that was coming easy to the ear. It wasn't a comfortable word. It was a very difficult word to hear. It was a word that came directly from God. And sometimes words that come from God are very difficult to get, are very difficult to grasp, right? And no one sure, no one sure that he knew it was going to rain eventually, right? Despite the fact that. Uh, he was inland and he looked a bit ridiculous. It sounded a bit fun, but there was a word that he had from God. And he had to keep to the fact that that word was correct. I'm sure a lot of people called him Mr. Rainy and a lot of people called him Mr. Mr. Floody and some people called him Mr. Watery. And I'm sure they went at him for this word that he knew. But, but he had to stick to this word because he knew that this was righteousness. This was what God had called him. And he had a word that was not widely accepted in that time. He had a word that was not popular in that time. He had a word that was not wanted in that time, but the word was correct. The word was from God. I believe that everybody who's watching us right now has been given a word from God that is not widely accepted in their lives. There's something that God is speaking to you about. And as much as God is speaking to you about it, it's not why it's not it's not something that it's not something that the world would accept coming from you, perhaps. It's not something that uh that is a widely accepted topic. It's not something that is comfortable to speak about. But neither there is God has given it to you. God has given it to you. And if you don't do the word that God has given to you, there's gonna be a flood. And sometimes we have to be mocked a little bit. And this is what I've been through a lot of the times. I asked Pastor to put up something on the screen. I hope he's put it up. And that, that's that's the general that's the general reception of the word of God. This is what Jesus had to do on a daily basis. On a daily basis, when Jesus walked, the the, the, the the word that he had was not widely accepted. It it was received with mockery, with teases, with silly questions. He had to put up with a lot. He had to the, the, the Pharisees practically stalked him just to make fun of him. Go around and try to say funny things and with all the wisdom they had, they kind of acted a bit childish, if you ask me. And this is what the world does to the things of God. The things of God are never, ever widely accepted. The Bible says that the road is very, very narrow. It's never a wide road. It's never a road that everybody can fit in. It has to be narrow. It has to be a very small road. And we have to squeeze in. We have to push ourselves in. Because not everybody that's on the road is going to make it in. But those that have heard the word, I would strongly recommend that while, 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 while the word is still to be received, let's receive the word with gladness. Let's receive the word with joy. Let's, not with popularity and not with a, 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 a pinch of salt. The Bible says in the, in the end times, they'll go heap up creatures for themselves that will come doctrines that will tickle their ears. Right? Doctrines that will take us like marshmallows. I love, I love this of marshmallows. Right? Doctrines that will Make it comfortable for us to, to digest. And this is not what the words are about. Make it comfortable for us to, to digest. And this is not 
not about how the word of God is 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 about the truth of the word, the truth of the word. God has built in us the ability to take the truth and to stand up for the truth. This is one thing that I like about Americans. Americans are able to stand up for what they know, what they believe, right? And I pray to God that the church in America would stand up for the truth of God now. And God, God, ne God never went and chose the best because you can say, I'm, I'm a horrible speaker. I, I, I really try to stumble. I'm stumbling through these words right now. I'm, 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 oh God, I hope I'm not speaking like this right now. Oh my word. I'm literally struggling through this. God, God, God never went and chose the perfect ones. You go ask Moses, right? And the one that he had was not, was not popular, but it was not widely accepted by the people. He wasn't, he wasn't the most stand-up guy according to them, right? But God chose him. Go ask Gideon. Gideon wasn't necessarily the strongest guy. In fact, when God was like, ah, uh -huh, no, not me. I'm the smallest of the tribe of Manasseh. You know the tribe of Manasseh is like this, and I'm literally the, the, the tiniest guy. So I'm not the guy you're looking for God. But God put a word of rashness, a righteousness inside. God put a true word inside. I'm believing today that I'm looking at a select group of people that God has put a word inside of for this generation. For, 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 for a time such as this, God has called each and every one of us to be the carriers of truth, to be the carriers of his word, to be the carriers of, of his presence right? through, through, through the fruits of the spirit. And I, I can testify for one that I've received so much love from, from a bunch of people that have never ever met me. Ah, you guys are the most loving. I don't know how you guys love so much. You guys are the most loving people. It's really, you guys love so much. Oh my word. <laughs> you guys are lovers. Oh my word. I thank God for you. And that's a sign of the spirit, right? Loving, kindness, gentleness, patience. All, all, all of the things that you're exhibiting are a sign of the spirit. Right? This means that you carry some spirit inside of you. you. Carry the spirit of God in full measure inside of you. Don't let the enemy come in and tell you otherwise about your family. Don't let the enemy come and tell you otherwise about your health. Don't let the enemy come in and tell you otherwise about, okay. about whatever is happening in your life right now. Right? The, 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 fact, the fact that the world does not agree about the terminal rapture right, is a big sign. It's a huge sign. It's a huge sign. That you are actually on the now. The world agreed with us. I would have a problem with this doctrine because nobody ever really agreed with Jesus. And if they never agreed with Jesus, how do we accept them to agree with us? Like I'm, I, trust me when I say I'm nothing, I'm nothing close to perfect. Oh, I'm the furthest thing from the word perfect. If 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 I was if I if I was on a table of perfect, uh, perfect would be on a different page, honestly, or in a different book. In a different library, uh, in a different country, different different authors, different generations, different languages. You know, if perfect and I were words, that's how far off I am from perfect. But the grace of God allows me to come and tell you something that's completely strange right now, and that's that He's working a good work in me, an imperfect man, in me, a person who can barely put a sentence together. In me, the, the grace of God is is acceptable for both you. And for me, the grace of God is available for both you and for me. And, 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 and this is despite how people might come at you or might say things to you. Sorry, my eyes are watering. My eyes are tearing. I, 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 I'm, 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 a, I'm a strong believer that, 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 that as long as God is with me, as long as the word of God, it doesn't matter what anybody has to say. Right. So you're going to find that when God has when God has when God has sent you, when God has given you a word, you're gonna face some opposition. That's why I asked Pastor to put up to put up the the, 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 the poster that that he put up a poster in a group somewhere and somebody says, Boy, deception. Right. And that's generically what the devil will do to you. Right. The devil will hear you, the devil will hear you coming, he will hear you trying to trying to pray. You hear you trying to read the word. You hear you trying to do something. And this will come right at you with one thought, bam. With one word, bam. And that word is meant to destroy you. Whose report will you believe is my question? Whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe some random voice that has got nothing to say about your history? Or are you going to believe God who has invested this much amount of word for our destiny?
The devil will say that you are nothing. The devil will say that you're not going to make it. You're going to become sick and you're going to die. The devil will tell you about how bad your health has been since forever. Or are you going to believe God who has invested 66 books, right? And of these 66 books, a bunch of them are directly directed at you. The reason, the, the reason I'm taking this angle is to show you that the devil, does, the, the, the devil doesn't have anything good to say. So what he does is that to raise questions against what God has to say. He'll say a bunch of things and have no proof of what God is saying or have no proof about what is it. All the devil does is he asks questions. He asks Jesus, is it, is, is it, well, wasn't it written that you would be caught by the angels? Isn't it written that you can turn bread into stone? Eve, uh, did, uh, did God really say, did God really say, did God really say that, that you shouldn't eat or that? He'll keep on asking you questions. Is it, is it really, really true that the rapture is happening before is it really, really true? Meanwhile, the word of God is very clear. After the tribulation, after the tribulation, it's there. It's written in plain out. It's there. And what it's going to do is God is going to bring a bunch of words that are going to try to distract you. That's what it does. It's a distracting spirit. Right? You try to distract from what the word of God clearly says. You try to bring doubt and try to bring any other narrative that is probably cropped out from a scenario cropped out from wherever, completely out of context, with no basis to try to make you disbelieve. Because he understands, he understands that we have been given a will, and he wants he wants to test that will. He wants to test your resolve. He wants to see whether you are steadfast, Noah. He wants to see whether you are going to drown in the flood that the flood comes. To all the Noahs out there, God has entrusted us with the word of righteousness. And he's written it very clear. Don't let anybody's questions question what God is saying. We have no right to question the monarchy. We have no right to question the kingship of God. When God says something, it is as he has said it. The person has been going on for a long time, trying to take it every single angle, every single angle, fighting every single argument to prove that the rapture will happen after the truth. I, have, I, I literally have no additions to what the word I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fight any single because the bible is clear jesus himself says after the tribulation then and that's it jesus says so jesus just said who am i to question what jesus said the same way that i'm gonna use this same narrative to say who are you to question the fact that jesus says you are healed in the name of jesus who are you to say who are you to question salvation that he has promised to your family who are you to question peace that is good who are you to question we are absolutely nobodies before God, but, but by grace has called us to him. Now, I started off by saying, imagine that everything he said was correct. And we're living in a world that says, no, let's question what God is saying. Let's question what God is saying. The difference between God and where we currently, we live in democracies. God is not a democracy. God runs a kingdom. And what the king says is, as the king has said, so I've taught myself for his coming to learn not to question the king. I'm, I'm quickly learning that, that, that my God is not President Serum Aposta or President Joe Biden or whoever. I, I've quickly learned that my God is a king and he's been ruling forever and he will rule forever. Amen. I'm, I'm teaching myself to be you know, obedient to what he has to say. I'm teaching myself to be submissive to his ways because I found that in submission I found that in obedience there's a blessing I found that in submission there's a blessing I found that when when the Bible says children obey your parents in the Lord this is Ephesians chapter 6 obey your parents in the Lord for this is right and then it goes on to say that there's a blessing to this the blessing is that you live a long life so this means that day I listened to my mom where she said don't cross the road she actually saved my life she gave me long life and that's my mom. Can you imagine what, what happens when you obey God? Can you, happens, can you imagine what happens when you stop worrying? You stop trying to take up the, the burdens of the entire world? Can you imagine what happens when you stop doubting? Can you imagine what happens when you stop considering what you're going to eat tomorrow because God is in charge of my, my recipe. God is, God is in charge of my menu tomorrow. 
Can you imagine how light you sleep when you're not worried about how much you're going to need? Or, or I, I, I've, I've literally come to a place of sound mind. The Bible says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And of a sound mind. Oh my God, I thank you for sound mind. Thank you for sound mind because your word is clear. The word of God is clear. Because we are filled with the spirit, the word of God is clear. Again, I'm going to take, let, let me take it back to our conversation. And then I'm going to change this. When is the rapture happening? It's clear. It's written. All I need to have is sound mind and not allow any questions to question what God is saying. I don't need any deep teaching to understand what Jesus has clearly said to me. Jesus is clear in his narrative. He's clear of his words. He says there's nothing more after that. The Apostle Paul is clear also. He says, don't, don't, don't be misled. Don't be deceived by anybody. By anybody. That these things will not happen. But right? it's very clear. That there's, there's, there's nothing that's going to happen unless the corner away happens and the man of sin be revealed. He's very clear about this. So I, I, I struggle to get the, the big arguments. I struggle to understand you know, all the narratives. I, I, in fact, all the narratives to me kind of sound like like the comment on the screen, that has got no context. Because the person that wrote that comment does not know me, never heard of me, never seen me. I'm on the other side of the world, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in South Africa, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm in Port Elizabeth. So how, how do we then come down to, the, to, 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 a, to a factual statement that says, this is because, that says that, that that, that more deception. That says that everything I'm going to say is a lie. How, how do you come down to that? Unless but you deny the truth. If you can deny the truth and question the truth so much, make it a habit to deny the truth, right? We'll find that the truth has got no substance to us. We'll find that the fruits that are found in obedience are not really in us. So um, my, my, my one was, uh, it was just to simply share and say that, that 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 image right there, the image on the screen, is literally what, what I go through on a daily basis with this topic. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult topic to carry. Can you imagine what, what Jesus had to go through? Because Jesus, on a daily basis, had to teach of something that was unpopular. Paul, Paul had to teach. In fact, he, he went as well. He, he was hectic. He went as far as writing books about this very unpopular conversation. And he continued talking about it. And every day people would see him. They would see this guy that carries some people at And all he ever did to them was irritate them. Though he believed that it was the truth, his conversation was irritation. It was just irritation. No, no one carried a very irritating conversation. People were partying. It was going down. Oh my. The Bible says they were marrying. They, they, they were joyful. And Paul and Noah would say, uh, Repent, 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 repent. If, 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 if you're listening to that at a party, trust me, you're going to get something stoned at you. You're going to get some, something, something will hit your head, you know, a cup or something, if you, pinball or something, right? But this word that is being is a word of righteousness, but it's not popular, it's not widely accepted because the environment is not conducive for repentance. The environment is not conducive. There is no flood. I don't see any clouds in the sky. Why are you telling me about clouds? There is no, there is no sign. Of, it's never rained. Why are you telling me about rain? No. I don't want to hear about this. Just join the party, bro, and chillax. Relax, man. You know, relax. Breathe in a bit. Stop this. This is the general narrative is the devil is going to try to tell you. So I, 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 I wanted to bring it from that angle and say that uh, I, I pray that you, st you stand firm. I pray that you be strong and of good courage. In fact, it is commanded to us for us to be strong and of good courage. It, God commands us because he knows in you you carry strength. He knows in you you carry power. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what I, I had to say. <laughs> I hope I didn't completely mess this up. <laughs> hey, Pastor Jay, can you hear me? I, hold on, I, can, I can hear you pause. Oh. oh, I know, but uh, you need me, though, for the live stream, right? Yes. To use this mic? Yeah. So can you still 
so um, you when you and I talked the other day, you you were gonna you, you said that you were gonna share a little bit about like like uh, our experience together there and kind of like what's happened uh, since we ministered together there in Africa and some of the experiences that you've had. First, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still in awe that he actually came to Africa. You know, Pastor is a bit hectic. I, I, I don't know about travel all the way to Africa. I didn't know anybody in Africa, but he did, so I just got for that. Um, since since he came through, um, we we've, we've 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 grown quite a lot, and. Um, Initially, I was, I, I, I literally thought I was the only person in the world that actually saw what the scripture says. And I was so confused, right? But when pastor came through, there's in a large turnaround, um, men of God around the city are, are, are searching the word, are searching, are searching the scriptures. And a bunch of them are actually following the, the, the ministry right now. They watch in, and uh, though they don't, though they might not be commenting, but they're there, and they watch some of them have been befriended pastor on Facebook. And, um, the, I, I, I literally had to make copies of, 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 of the book and send to to a bunch of pastors around South Africa because initially I was I was I was I was literally called uh, uh, Lucifer and devil and all these horrible words and this was because of my my perspective on the scripture saying I'm ready to be the yeah, idol the pastor so the for me immature and they would, you know, push me aside and say, you know, what you're talking about this is what the scripture says. And they, they just didn't want to listen. They didn't want to see what the word of God says. Until they began to listen, then I saw a huge change. It was the huge change in the mindset and in the heart. Of the people here. This is a very, very hard topic because here in Africa, and I mean Africa as a well, whole, I've, I've traveled Africa quite a bit. Um, the furthest I've gone was as far to Kenya, but before that, I've been all across Southern Africa. That's your Zambia, Zimbabwe, and so on. Um, most of what we, most of what people teach here, is what they get from there in America. So the whole prosperity gospel, the whole, all, 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 all of, the whole thing that you guys are doing there is being done here on a lower level, right? All the, the whole trying to create the mega church vibe and everything is being done here and straight being copied from there. So everything that you guys are doing there, here we try here we try to do the same. So we, America when Pastor when Pastor talks about America being 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 a, a world leader, I, I I really don't think that most Americans know the level of influence that they have over the rest of the world. Uh, it's, it's 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 America is very influential. America is so influential that you've literally got guys walking around wearing the American flag out here, you know, mm -hmm. bandanas and shoes and people have you no know, tattoos. Never seen American walking around with the Zambian flag. In fact, most Americans don't know that Zambia exists. They don't know that Zimbabwe exists. They don't know that Ghana exists. To some Americans, uh, Africa is a, Africa is one huge country. So I'm trying to show you the level of influence that America has. America has, a, has got a large influence. With the influence that America has, right, that influence has got a, has got an ability to to persuade or dissuade or or, or to, to to teach people something. With the small with the small part that you have in, the, in your influence on America, please use it with with the force with, with all your might and all your power because what you're doing there is is influencing thousands and thousands of people. When you vote, vote having trusted, and I'm not trying to get this the stream cut off. But when you're going to vote, vote knowing that your vote is not only for America, but it's for Africa. It's for a place somewhere in a village you've never probably heard about. Your vote carries a lot of power, yeah. right? Every decision that your Congress makes, every decision that your parliament makes, touches the lives of many people all across this continent. Not just there, but all across the world. So when decisions are being made there, no, they streamline down to us out here. When, 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 can, am I, am I still audible? Go ahead. Okay. 
everything that 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 you do out there literally waters down here and causes things to grow so most of most of the teachings most of the most of the 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 the, the, the teachings that have been brought here are coming from there again this this also applies to this final days ministry there's a level of influence that pastor ryan has because of everybody there that allows people here to listen right so i can speak at the one listen to but when pastor rice it's a completely different narrative because it's in america it is an american so when you guys sit there and you come to class every single thursday to me friday in the morning right uh -huh, they're going to listen your, your support to this ministry is very important it 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 it, it it teaches the many, many thousands of people out. You you might not see, but many thousands of people through their ministers are being blessed by this ministry because it's coming from where you guys are. So yes, you're coming through. You're praying for Pastor Ryan, praying for this ministry. You sitting right there is influencing a lot of people into believing the truth of the word because you you all have been called into leadership. You might be thinking you're just a, just a normal person, but you're not sitting right there. You are actually very important to the cause of God. You're actually very, very key. You are called for a time such as this. You might think it's all the questions that you ask. I normally get questions being asked in the background. We, 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 we on this side are going to try to put volume to try to hear what was the question. I didn't get that question. Then Pastor Ryan's going to say, please repeat the question because we want to hear what is, what is it that you're thinking. Right? What's on your mind? What? How do you analyze what he's saying? What? How does it affect you? So we can be affected also. You sitting there is not just the you sitting there is person. You sitting there is ministry it in itself. You sitting there is very important. When Pastor Ryan came through, uh, ministers we had twelve pastors come through, and that was very simple. That was very very simple. Twelve pastors, and they since have gone out and are teaching about this strange gospel that has never been heard before this side. They've literally gone out and are teaching their congregations, teaching people across the city about the coming Messiah. Even just talking about the Messiah was preached. We, we, we didn't teach about the coming of Jesus. We talked about your, your, your finances, your financial breakthrough. You know, you can understand, but we didn't, people here, here uh, Pastor Ryan, to open the Bible, like open the Bible like this, oh, it doesn't happen in Africa. It just never happens. We just need one verse, and that's all it takes. One verse, whatever, and, and this verse doesn't that, that lesson, We don't even have to know where it comes from. We will preach off that verse, and what we got preach is what we heard somewhere online. So after after that, I've noticed that there's been there's been a huge change. Ministers have been trying to get in touch, trying to get in touch with us, so that we can be able to share the word. Before that, I was called Lucifer 2.0. I was devil 007. I was I was that dude. <laughs> But now God, God, God is opening doors. God is really, really opening doors. So that, that in summary, that's been that's been uh, 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 my my experience with 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 doing the work of God. Uh, it's been it's not been easy. It's been very very hard. Um, teaching teaching the word is very very difficult. Hey, uh, Pastor Jay, do you want do you want to share a little? Because we have. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you, Boston. Okay, good. Um, do you want to share a little bit about, uh, I, I, I have with the class, but maybe there's some new people listening, but uh, what happened up in Kenya with Bishop George, and then um, tell everybody, I've I probably mentioned here, but tell everybody what Bishop George is working on up there with the, with the radio thing. Oh, actually, we did a fundraiser here. They know about that, but do you want to share about Kenya? Kenya with um, with Pastor Ryan in Kidali. Bishop George is literally the, the most gentle man you're ever gonna meet. He's soft, kind, and sweet, and he's all kinds of goodness. And I really bless God for him. Uh, when, when when we met with him, I was so humbled to meet a servant of God from across the, the continent. And when we met with him, I didn't realize. I didn't realize that that God was able to spark a fire in him the way he did. Because when he began to minister, I was so blessed. I was also when you first meet him, he's very soft, humble, gentle, and meek. 
But when he begins to minister, he ministers with such fire and such zeal for God. And that zeal and fire that he has for God literally translates into his ministry. He, he, he's, he's, he's now on radio and he's, um, he's, he's working on his final days in Kenya. He got, him, uh, got himself um, a mic. Thank place God for everybody that, that, that donated into that mic. Got himself a mic such as like my one. And uh, he's going to be transmitting uh, and translate uh, the teachings to a large amount of people in Kenya. And so important and so crucial because of the influence that God has given him in Kenya. And um, I bless God because when we went to Kenya, we met very influential pastors. And that's something that I did note. God allowed us to meet very influential pastors that are heading big churches, churches that have got more than altogether just over 100,000 people. One of them was easily headed in a church with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was 80 pastors. And underneath them were like a, a congregation of like 70,000 people. And that's a lot. And Bishop Joseph has got, Bishop George, Bishop George has got access to that audience. You know, he's got access to those people. And he's like very close with this final day. So he's able to teach. That, this is why I say that UCT Day is very important. UCT Day is very, very important. Bishop George is able to teach this, 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 this gospel, the true gospel of God, to thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Because you are sitting there, you are praying, you are supporting, you are, you are, you are spirit filled. You are. You sitting there is not just sitting there. You sitting there is ministry. You have to be sitting there. You have to be. You have to be there. Does anybody know what Andrew did for Jesus? Does anybody know what 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 uh uh I'm trying to think about another disciple now? What 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 talking to my disciples, Mark, Matthew, does anybody know what they did? We know there were 12 disciples, and it was very important for them to be there because Jesus would not go anywhere without them being there. Jesus would not go anywhere. Before starting his ministry, the first thing that Jesus does is bring in the fold of the of the 12 apostles. And I dare to say that you guys carry that mental. You carry that mental of ministry that is that is very, very important for us out here. Very, very important. So Bishop George is, Bishop George is talking to, to thousands of people, bless be God, and he's communicating the message of when Jesus is coming back. The fact, the fact that Jesus has come back is a big thing in itself. So he's talking about Jesus actually coming back as King and Messiah. He's talking about the coming of the Messiah. He's working on translating uh, translating um, uh, uh, the, the, some of the work, some of the teachings into, into, what's this language now? Into, and I forget this language, uh, Swahili. And Swahili is literally one of the most widely spoken languages in Africa. It's more popular, I think, than any other language in Africa. Am I a good, Pastor? Can yeah, you hear me? Absolutely. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, does anybody have any um, questions for? Oh, I'm I'm asking the class if anyone has any questions for you or um, any questions for Pastor Jay or anything you'd like to say to him. I'm gonna have to repeat it. So, so John, behave, huh? Why you over here? <laughs> so, uh, so Carlos asks when you're coming to Lake Havasu to to be with us in person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just not sure, but I'm hoping very soon. I'd love to meet everybody. Because by the way, I should warn everybody, I'm a big hugger. So I, if, if, if you cannot get into hugs, you shouldn't be praying for me to come. I hug, <laughs> oh my word. So, so that's just a warning for everybody. I'm, I'm a serial hugger. So I don't know if that's what you guys want. <laughs> and, he, and he's really tall. I mentioned that, right? So, you know, he like hugs down. I'm, I'm so. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a serial giggler. I giggle all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> So, so Pastor Jay, the right answer is when Pastor Ryan does a fundraiser to bring me there. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, Sorry, I said the correct answer is when we do a fundraiser here to, to be able to bring you here. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> so, and you know what? I, I want to tell you guys too, and I know, I know that, um, and I hope this is okay, you know. It, the, the, these final days, you know, we're not, it, this is not one of those ministries where it's like, you know, uh, won't you help us? And like, I, like I'm trying to, you know, um, make a living off the ministry. Cause I don't, I put in thousands of dollars a year of, of me and Pam's money 
don't tell PM, I'm just kidding, just kidding. But, um, so, but so, so what we do in our ministry, and I say our, meaning, meaning all of us, okay, so Pastor Jay's part of it, you guys know that, that this is your ministry, right? But um, it, it's, it's, to, it's to succeed in what the Father has called this ministry to do. So, so you guys look around, I mean, um, Pastor Jay is saying that, that our work over in Africa, I mean, I, I had no idea, but you know, Bishop George has communicated this, I mean, it's actually like impacted like, like thousands, you know, like propagates. And I'm, I'm amazed by that um, because this message is so important. We are in the last days. The body of Christ has been deceived about, about the end times and, and how this all actually is going to play out. So um, it's exciting that God is using us. But, but uh, one thing I want to do, so, so we definitely want to get Pastor Jay over here. So, so I'm going to be, you know, I do a lot of fundraisers and you guys really like pony up. I mean, they... They paid for the whole last trip to Africa, Pastor Jay. I chipped in a little bit, so, but which is just such a blessing, and I just I know that God's blessing you guys abundantly for for participating in this very unusual little ministry, right? But um, I just want to say, and I'll just say it publicly right right now, so everybody knows that uh, that that Ben and Mark and I are leaving for Israel four weeks from tomorrow. You know, it's coming up that fast, Mark, right? And um, the one major, like, missing ingredient in my heart is going to be Pastor Jay because when I was in Africa, I got that so strong that um, that I need to bring Pastor Jay to Israel too. So, uh, just to give you guys a heads up, so start believing for increase now because I'm going to do a fund- fundraiser for that too. Next time I go to Israel, that's my plan is for our class to to uh, to send Pastor Jay there too. So, because he needs to get his feet on the ground there. Um, I mean, he'd never even been on a plane before I came to Africa and grabbed him and said, we're going to Kenya. And you, what'd you do, like eight flights all together? And you, you, like, you like to fly now, right, Pastor Jay? So I didn't get the last I said, I, said I, I, got, I got you hooked on uh, airline travel, right, flying? <laughs> can, can you hear me? Yeah, I said you like to fly, right? I, I don't know why you can't hear me. It's okay. Just take my word for it. Yeah, look what John's doing. Look at John, <laughs> right? Just take my word for it. He's like very. In fact, um, he's going to have to watch this later to, to hear all this. But uh, I think it was just today he actually posted a picture on his Facebook page or ministry page saying, "God will call you to the nations." God, I know I'm doing all the talking here. Oh, lost him. He'll he'll be back. Um, yeah, the internet connection, my gosh. It's it's probably on his end. Uh, it's called load sharing, and, and you'll be on the internet, and then all of a sudden it'll just drop off. My clients and my boss loved it when I was trying to get work done over there. But um, anyways, he just posted a picture just just uh, today, um, and it was a picture of an, of a, uh, and, and he said, God will call you to the nations. And it was a picture of an airplane wing, and I recognized the logo on it, so it was actually like a picture that he took when we did our trip, so loved it. But um, but really, uh, j- just to say that real quick, I, we may have lost him completely, but but it's really in my heart to um, to bring him with this ministry to Israel next time I go. I think it's it's just like a few hundred bucks to fly him from South Africa, way cheaper than us, Mark, I know, right? Not fair at all. It's more expensive for us, but... <laughs> from South Africa, yeah, it's not not much. He's back. Okay. Oh, you're back. Yay. So, uh, so, anyways, yeah. Um, any any questions for Pastor Jay about his ministry or anything? We're we're kind of ending early early here tonight, but. Oh, so Pastor Jay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can hear me. Okay. Oh, good. On the phone, oh, brother. <laughs> He, see, it's part of this ministry, just like super high tech, like me and Ben and Elijah, right? Wow. So, um, so uh, Sil- what, was that Sylvia that asked that? No. Who? Oh, my mother-in-law. Hello. Gosh. Wow. Hello. So, Pastor Jay, you can hear me, right? You can hear me? Oh, <laughs> he's listening on his phone, so there's like a 30-second like a delay. What's your day? Oh, Oh, good. Like it's like a real delay. Like two I'll just say it. So, so my beautiful mother-in-law, Sharon Kaysen, uh, she wants to know if you are teaching off of our timeline, the Revelation timeline, the Sacred Scroll. It's actually my favorite. It's actually my favorite. Uh, some of my, some of my, well, I had to take it down because I was, I was using it at church. Because of my work uh, for the past, since the past uh, was last year. In his, um, in his living room. <laughs> the timeline is so important. The timeline is 
Can you hear me? Am I, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yep, good. The timeline is so important. The timeline is so, so important. It um, uh, helps give a mental image of what is going to happen. Pastor, um, my timeline still hasn't arrived at one. Oh, I'm having to use the one I had to go back. It's very, very, I've had to make little copies of it, but I am using it. It's very, very important. I'm, I'm, I'm going through it daily. Um, um, it helps you. I hope, I hope everybody has it. I, it helps. I have it online, but having the actual version, having the actual, the actual timeline, right, helps put this perspective, uh, everything. It, it helps to go through the book of Revelation very, very easily when you can see when the final goals are going to be happening and when, when, when the timing of the rapture is and it gives you a, a for, for me, I'm, I'm, I, I, I told Pastor that I, I suffered from, I, I hate to use the word suffer. I, I could, I, I, when I was younger, I, I, I had dyslexia, so I struggled to read. I really, really struggled to read. I'm a mathematician, but when it comes to reading, it's a very difficult thing. When it comes to speaking, speaking is even worse. It's worse. <laughs> so far. I don't know why God called me to this thing when I can't yeah, speak that's how I feel. or read. I really, really struggle. So for me, images and pictures and, and graphical things really bring to life, uh, really bring to life what is being spoken about in scripture. Especially when something is, is, is in order and has been given uh, a symmetry. And, 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 and I remember when, when, when Kenya, after Pastor put out the timeline, it's as if everybody suddenly was able to picture what was written in scripture. So there, was, there was a spark in everybody. Everybody kind of jumped on and understood what was happening. The timeline is very... So I am using my timeline. I mean, I'm, I'm still going through it. Um, I'm slowly... The timeline, the, the timeline is, is study material that needs to be studied. So you need to spend time. You need to break you need it to down. down part part you, need like you need to read an entire chapter, chapter, like chapters just to get past... So I'm not look, I'm not looking at it in full. I'm looking at it in parts. I'm working my way through it, and I'm not I'm not done yet. I'm I'm literally going. Uh, it's very important that we place those events in order. It's very important that we know exactly what's going to happen because when 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 God says something, when God gives a word, that instruction must be held in high regard. When God says, "Thou shalt not steal." Right? What is he talking about when he says thou shalt steal? Is he only talking about taking something from the shop that doesn't belong to you? Is he only talking? Is he, is he, is he talking about thou shalt not also steal in your heart? Is he saying thou shalt not steal of your offer? Is he saying that there's a bunch of things that he's talking about that need that need you to go in detail to get an image of what he's saying? So when God says something, it's not necessarily only the words in English that we're looking at, but we're looking at a full picture of what he's trying to communicate to us. It's very important. It's very important as children of God that, that that we don't limit God to what we currently understand, but we open up our minds and our hearts to every other thing that the Spirit of God will be able to lead us. And if God provides uh, resource material or study materials, please grab a hold of them and use them in the best way that you know how. But there's coming a time, children of God, where you're not going to be able to use your Bible. Right? Your Bible is going to need to be in there. So every every resource that God is giving, every material that God is giving, grab it, stick it in there, and make sure that it's planted in there. Make sure that it's written there. Make sure that it's there. Make sure that make sure that it's it's it's, it's practically uh, a part of your character. It's it's infringed, embedded in you, so that if even if somebody tried to take it away, they just you can't take away. You can't take away. You can't take away my face. As much as you might try to do whatever, this is this is not. You can't take away my name. My name is Jay. This is gonna be my name forever. It's part of who I am. The scriptures are part of who I am. Even, even, even if, even if you took away my car, took away my house, to go, you can't take away something that God has embroidered in me. Yeah. So every material that God has given us, every form of, every resource, every information that God gives, please, children of God, make it a part of, make it, make it who you are. Grab it, learn it. If it's something that does not make sense to you, study. If, if you feel your spirit discards it, discard it. Right? Because you've been given the spirit of discernment. Learn to use the spirit of discernment. This means that, this, this practically means that uh, uh, when your spirit says don't go, it goes as far as that. It actually starts with the basic, basic discernment. discernment. Discernment is that spirit that will tell you don't go there. Don't go there. When the spirit of God is telling you not to go there, child of God, don't go. Don't be curious and do something your the spirit of God has clearly ministered to you about. This is what the Apostle Paul says, don't frustrate the spirit. 
don't 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 not listen god is speaking in you don't don't be stubborn don't be hard headed right it's it's that with the basic your your basic communication with, your spirit, with the spirit of god you know? it's a, this is why we need to be spiritual you need, you need to remind you need to remind yourself to be spirit filled every single day every single day and being spirit filled is manifest by the fruits that you carry and not only by the fruits that you carry but you've been able to listen the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word and sometimes god doesn't only speak in words but god will speak through your conscience god will tell you mm-hmm. don't say that it's time to pray now it's time to pray it's time to... if you don't pray you're frustrating the spirit of god but if you if god communicates with you now it's time to put away your phone and pray child of god put away your phone and pray right and 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 if, if god if god says read isaiah don't ask questions why am i reading isaiah open the bible and read isaiah because we are we, we we're going to find that we are we and the reason i'm taking this route is to show you the importance of the of every material that god gives us because god will communicate with us in different ways right god will speak to us in, in but if you can't if you can't even do the basics and the basics is basically listening to the spirit right learning the communication of this how the spirit of god communicates with you so with me if when 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 when, when god speaks in my when i when i hear that god is speaking in my heart okay let me, let me, let me actually give let me actually make this example um uh, some someone is sleeping and when he's sleeping, he hears a voice. Say, someone, someone, wake up! Someone wakes up and goes to Eli and says, "I heard, I heard you calling me, sir." And and and, and Eli says, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep." Again, he hears the voice, and then Eli realizes, "Oh, this one is hearing God, but they don't know that it's God who's speaking to them." Right? This is why we every time, every, every single communication that God is giving us. It's probably God speaking to you, but we're not. So we have to use everything that God is giving to us. Everything. The Apostle Paul says that there is no excuse for us not to believe in God. So when God gives resources, your Bible, your 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 timeline, your books, your time, research, Google, whatever, use whatever you can to develop what God is putting inside of you. You're probably never going to arrive to where you're going to if you don't look at the whole map. You're going to have to learn to look at everything that God is putting in front of you for you to arrive at your full destiny. Some some people actually are frustrating themselves, are frustrating their destinies, frustrating their families, frustrating them in the future by not paying attention to what God is saying now. And that's why I'm taking the timeline step by step so that I can try to get everything that's good. Anything that I have a question on, ask pastor. I'm going to hit him up and say, pastor, where are you? Where are you? What did you mean when you say this? And I'm gonna bug him and bug him up and up until he explains it. So Pastor knows when it comes to me, he has to explain himself. You have you have to explain why did he use such a term? Why did he put that word there? Because I want to understand what God was saying to him about because there's certain things that God will say to, to Mama Sharon Jackson online, and, and I'm like, hmm, that's deep. I wonder what God was saying there, right? And I, I'm using it as an example because God will speak to her and God will have a word for her, and God she'll use she'll put out a scripture there, and when she puts the scripture there, I'll be like, hmm. All that God was trying to say to her then, I'm gonna try to trace, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to dig deep. So it's not for me, it's not just a timeline. For me, it's 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 a part of me when when the time comes. It's we have to be we, we have to take everything in right now so that when the time when the day of evil comes, we're able to quench the evil darts of the enemy. The evil darts of the enemy is doubt, is worry. This this topic of of, of the rapture is not just the topic of the rapture. It's the, it's the topic of our lives. Right, because it's the word of God. Right, this topic of the timing of the rapture is if we, we if if we are accurately right about this, if you are right in in the timing of the rapture, if you are right about this, this would mean that God is effectively communicating with you. But right? God is speaking to you and you are listening. This is great because many people have heard God speak but have not heard God speak. They hear God speak but they don't hear God speak. God is and they're hearing a bunch of words. Right? But they're not hearing, they're not listening to what he's saying. They're not listening to what he's saying. People go day in, day out. Every single Sunday they go to they're going to church and coming out of church. They go to church and coming out of church. And the only time they get the presence of God is when they're in the church. Right? When they're in the in the in the fellowship, in the gathering, right? Out of the church, there is no presence. And that's what the that's what the timeline means to me. The timeline means to me that after we're done with this, I'm going back to go study. I'm going back to get some to get me some more presents. I'm going back to get me some more God. I'm sorry, I think I dragged that out very long. Did that? Yeah, took a long yeah, to explain that. And I hope I actually answered the question. <laughs> See, this is 
can you hear me, Pastor Jay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Pastor Jay? Yeah. yeah. This, this is why you're a, an equal partner in these Fennel Days ministries, because you're long-winded like me. I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, listen, um, uh, I want to uh, make a couple of comments about the, the timeline. So I, so um, the timeline, this, this you know, uh, scroll here, I brought uh, three of them with me over to Africa. So one was for me to use for teaching, and we used it every single session. We, we had, um, I think, four venues technically scheduled. We ended up doing nine, including like, like a huge church in Nairobi, a big pastor's conference and all that. But uh, the other two scrolls, I, I gave one to Pastor Jay and one to Bishop George in Kenya. Um, and it's so sad. So, so like, like Pastor Jay said, he, his wife actually let him hang his in their living room. Pam would never let me do that, believe me. I wouldn't even ask, right? Um, and and it, it was there for like months, it sounds like. But, uh, but the versions I brought to Africa, I don't know if you guys remember, but the, um, the original version of this had no graphics at all. And the version I brought to Africa only had three graphics that the... the the ones that you see, um, you know, along the along this line here. So Jesus coming back, the third temple, and then the the astro, you know, the comet impact event, cosmic impact event at the beginning of the, of the tribulation. All these, you know, pretty ones down here, which I think are really really useful. You got to kind of kind of get close to it to look at them. Um, so so that's all that Pastor Jay has is the real simple one with just three three graphics, right? And he's trying to teach off that, you know. Um, so I actually um, sent him a copy of this one about a month ago, a little more than a month ago. Uh, still hasn't got there. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try again. Uh, South Africa, it's kind of interesting between here and there, there. There seems to be like a black hole over the Atlantic that things just get sucked in. A few things we've sent have made it there. But if, like Pastor Marine tried to, tried to send him books, disappeared in the thin air. So, so I'm going to figure out how to, how to get this version to you, Pastor Jay the one that's online right now, the full color version. So Pastor Jay, if you go to thesefunneldays.org, click Revelation Timeline, you'll see the, the current version. That's the one I'm trying to get to you. Um, th to print this costs, uh, now don't panic, because I'm going to tell you, to print this costs about $150, maybe $200 to, to actually do this, laminated and, and all that, right? And um, to send it USPS, uh, I think I spent about 40, 50 bucks, but I'm going to need to send this by DHL, UPS, something like that, to make sure it actually gets to his door. Uh, but I'll make you guys a deal. You guys pay for the rest of the fundraiser for Israel, and I'll pay for this myself out of my own pocket. Okay, deal? Yes? You going for it? <laughs> cool. So, um, but yeah, seriously, this will be out of my own pocket. I'm going to try to send this to him again, but, um, but pray about that. That's what I want you guys to do is pray that I can get this scroll to Pastor Jay. Uh, once I get this to Pastor Jay, then I'm going to try to get one to Bishop George because he's got the 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 much less graphic version and he's trying to like teach this in Swahili you know so um the other thing I want to say is uh anyone who doesn't have a copy right now of the scroll I've got the the smaller versions on white paper but they're full color uh those now the cost is up to like over forty dollars for one of those um but Staples made a mistake on on one order so the guy comped me don't tell him I told you okay like a hundred percent free he did it again and then there was some other issue so I actually got like I think 40, 40, 40 scrolls altogether would have cost hundreds of dollars for, for free. Okay, thank, thank you, Sta Staples. God, please bless Andrew at Staples. So, um, and so anyone who's, huh? Thank you for I know, my gosh, that's just, that's just God. So, because our money needs to go toward Israel, right? So, um, so anyone who's watching on the live stream, anyone here who does not have a copy of the scroll, please take Pastor Jay's advice. Let me know, and it's my gift to you, okay? You don't have a copy yet? Okay, you're going to have one. I've got him in my track, okay? Uh, Jay, exactly, exactly, like Oprah. You remember that? You're too young for that. Um, so I noticed that Jeremiah and Emily are watching online. Um, so Jeremiah and Emily, let me know. I'll give you guys a scroll, too. Uh, and, the, and the final thing I want to say real quick is that, uh, Pastor Jay, I, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? You can't even see me. Here I am. See, now I can't hear you. <laughs> Gosh, technology. We're trying, guys. Thanks, thanks for your patience. So, um, but uh, so Pastor Jay, I don't know if you heard. Hi, that uh, that we're going to do class again in one week, and I'm going to start uh, teaching the timeline again, and the and the context of that. We're still going to do the rapture, but I'm going to alternate. I'm going to go back and forth between those two topics. 
but, uh, but the context of, of teaching the timeline is going to be, are we really in the last days? And I promise you, by the time we're done, you will be 100%. more convinced than you, than you even think is possible. Seriously, okay, you're, you're gonna love this topic. So, um, so you know, I, I think I'm gonna let you guys out a few minutes early here. Pastor Jay, do you have anything else you wanna share? Or? Well, you're gonna have to use sign language because we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. We just have a, a couple of minutes left. So, do you have anything else you'd like to share with the class, or? That's Ben. And, uh, ben Wave. And, <laughs> 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 and, and, and I can't clearly, but I, I, I am truly, I truly in love with you guys. Uh, bless God for you. And now, sorry to everybody else who's joining us uh, online, it doesn't know everybody here, but I just want to take time to reach and say, I bless God for all my people out there. Love you guys so much. You guys are my people, and I want to God for you, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm blessed. So I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how we got here. I really have no clue how we got here, but mm. I'm glad we are right now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm blessing God so much, and I thank God for this opportunity to be able to speak to you, um, and to everybody else. I'm also blessing of everybody who's online. Also, I really thank God for Mom Sherry Jackson, uh, um, Pam. I, everybody else who's there, uh, Cindy, she's there, basically, but for mom, Cindy is there, and everybody, I really, really do bless God, and I'm very, very grateful for each and every one of your prayers, your support. Um, um, I, I didn't get an opportunity to thank you for what, for, for the time I was, no, I think it was last year, Pastor, um, I was going to take bread to, so what we you know, do is that we collect, uh, we take our offerings and we buy bread, that's what we're saying, we take our offerings and we buy bread. And I was taking bread to a place in the location. The location, the person knows what the location is. I should explain what the location is. Uh -huh. oh, can, can, you, can you hear me, Pastor? Yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. Yeah, keep going. Am I still? Okay. Yeah. So a location, a location is here are literally your, your rural settlements. And that's what we do. We buy bread and food and whatnot. And that day, literally, I could hear that I was not supposed to go, and God was clearly coming with me, don't go, dude, don't go, don't go. And I was like, I'm going to give this for this bread. And I could hear him out, and my friends, some guys from church told me, look, today, please just don't go to the location. Stay home, you know, go to work. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna let anybody stand between, between me and the bread, and that's the day I got hijacked. So I was driving, and uh, I got cornered, right? And I didn't listen when God was speaking, I really didn't listen, and I got cornered, they blocked me in, uh, Put out guns and what it was hectic, you know, and and uh, uh, it was not nice. But I do thank God so much because I realized that I've got family and all of you know the love, the prayers, support. Uh, this this really, you know, in, 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 that, that was one of my lowest moments last year. And God allowed you, everybody that sent those wonderful messages, the prayers, you know, the care. And all those things, they really went a long way. I really appreciate And all the support. I'm, I'm, I'm the shyest person when it comes to this thing of money. And I don't like talking about money. I really don't like the whole money thing. But I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because they literally took what we had last night. And I that day, I literally withdrawn everything that I had from the bank because I was going to pay my child's school. And they literally took everything. And God used everybody, from people from across the world. And... We, we didn't feel anything that the devil did that day. I promise you, we, I was fine. I, I was okay. The point, I, was, I was just wearing the, the, the neck brace to look cool. And I was wearing that, uh, that I had my, my bandit on to look, you know, like I had some vibes. Uh, <laughs> but I was, I was fine. I was okay because God had protected me. And in that, he showed me family. That I learned family. I, I learned that the love of God is, is, is abound. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I really, I really, really do. And for, for, for everybody that's also there in, in that in that community. It's not you're not you're not just there. You're not just there. I keep on saying this. I'm saying this on purpose so that you know you're not just seated there, you're not a, you're not just in the chair feeling up. No, no, you're very important. 
you are very, very important. You are you are necessary for this season. You are necessary. Lake Hefesu is very, very important. Mm. Lake Hefesu is on the map right now. Lake, Lake, Lake Hefesu is, is, is appearing in Port Elizabeth right now. Lake Hefesu is appearing in Ghana. Lake Hefesu is appearing in Nigeria. Lake Hefesu is appearing in India. Lake Hefesu is appearing across the world. And it's not just Lake Hefesu, it's you that's, it, that's bringing this to the rest of, of the world. Whoever thought, like, like Jesus, who, they, they say it. How can, can can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of the land of the Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? I dare to say that something good is coming for like Hepesu to the world. And I thank God for every single beautiful heart that's in like Hepesu, that's standing for God in sincerity and in truth just for the gospel, just for the word. I really thank God for this beautiful thing that's coming up out of like Hepesu. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, let's give him a hand. Yeah, we we love you too, Pastor Jay. I mean, so sincerely, your family is our family, and and uh, uh, yeah, for sure, we're going to get you here in person. We're going to get you to Israel one of these one of these days soon, and um, yeah, just just uh, want to tell you how much we appreciate your your anointing and your heart and and your spirit and what God has gifted you with, and uh, we will have you back again. We're going to work on our technology a little bit. Make it a little bit better next time. <laughs> yeah, ben, ben and Elijah will get to work. Do you know, um, so Elijah, uh, uh, Ben's like my number one now, right? Elijah was for years, and Elijah, yeah. right, Ben? I mean, Elijah may probably, yeah, Elijah probably could have fixed this, but he is home with, uh, he's fighting a cold right now, so pray for <laughs> Elijah. But anyways, yeah, so appreciate having you here. Um, Pastor Jay, would you uh, do us the honor of closing our class in prayer, please? exalted king of the ages. I'd like to give you the glory, Lord God Almighty. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We acknowledge the beauty of your holiness, O God. We thank you, Father, for every single soul, every single heart, every single family that is represented here tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for bringing us as, as one under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for the word that is true. Father, Father, we decrease that you might increase in us. We give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. We ask that the King of the universe, the King of the world, might see it fit to bless every single person here in the mighty name of Jesus. I request, O oh God, that you might see it pleasing to bless every one of their hearts, their families, their extended families, their households, their works, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would do what only you can do in their lives. At that point of needs, Heavenly Father, emotionally, physically, spiritually, oh God, that you touch somebody tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that you might confirm your word to them by doing what only you can do in their lives. No weapon that is formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that shall arise against them in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the sons of the Lord, and their righteousness is of this. So thank you, Father, for protection. Thank you, Father, for your divine hand that allows them to run faster than the chariots of the king have been Father. Thank you, Father, for the truth of your word. We thank you, Father, for the feeling of the spirit. We thank you, Father, for the receiving of the truth. Thank you, Father, that everybody there is receiving a, a, a higher level tonight, Father, of your spirit, a higher level, Father, of understanding of their purpose, of understanding who they are, oh God, to this time, who they are, oh God, to your ways. Who they are, oh God, in the campus of what you are doing, Father. Listen, thank you, Father, for revealing to them your goodness. Thank you, Father, for to reveal to them your kindness. And I give you glory, Lord God Almighty. I thank you. I'd like to thank you so much for giving this opportunity to be able to communicate with people from across the world, Heavenly Father. You are so good. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful work that you are doing. Us. I thank you, Father, for Pastor Ryan. Pastor Pam, I give you glory and honor for them, Heavenly Father. I just want to dedicate them to your hands, Father, and pray a special, a special protection over them and anointing, Father, provision, Father. And I pray for all those that are going on the trip to, to Israel, Father, that, Father, you provide, because I know we are providing, Father, you are Jehovah Jireh, you are able to provide for what belongs to you, Heavenly Father. You've never felt into one start now. Thank you, Father, as they go there, they'll be fruitful, they'll have a successful trip in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I give you glory. I give you honor in the name of Jesus Christ, and Father. I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let's give another hand, everybody. Amen.
All right. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Jay. We we love you. Um, so appreciate you. We will have you back in. Give our love to Dee Dee, the kids, Dombey, and uh, and the Way Church over there. Okay, and the whole continent of Africa. Just say hi. Okay, from us. So uh, so we will. Yeah, we will have you back. I'll touch base with you a little bit later on. Um, be blessed. Go get some sleep. You have to work tomorrow, so get some sleep, right? <laughs> and uh, everybody, remember, please come back. <laughs> yeah, come back, and everybody come back uh, next Thursday. We'll start the new topic. In the meantime, Ben, what do I always say? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, he left. So, all right, thanks, you guys. Yep. Okay, good night. Love you. All right. <laughs> Thank you.